Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. You yourselves know, brothers, that our visit was not in vain. But even after we had previously suffered and were shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our, in our God to declare to you the gospel of God amidst much opposition. For... Our exhortation was not from deceit, nor from uncleanliness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not to please men, but God, who examines our hearts. For neither at any time did we come with flattering words, as you know, nor with pretext for greed. God is our witness." Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse caring for her own children. So having great love toward you, we were willing to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you were dear to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. So in our scripture lesson for today, we find the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica. And Thessalonica is located in what is now northern Greece, and he writes this letter to them to discuss how happy he is with the church and the way that it is functioning. See, Paul was concerned because he didn't get to spend a lot of time with the Thessalonians. So he sent Timothy to encourage them, and when Timothy returned to Paul and reports what he has seen, Paul decides to write them this letter. And in our part of the letter that we're looking at today, we get a chance to see how Paul is really feeling. He talks to them, telling them how happy he is things are going well. He lets them know he's especially happy that things are going well for them, because prior to coming to Thessalonica, he was in Philippi, and things did not go great for him while he was in Philippi. So Paul wants to make it clear to the people that he and his compatriots did not come to the Thessalonians to try and increase their own profit. And they didn't come to them with a notion or any notion that was of an unclean nature. They came to them simply to proclaim the gospel boldly and plainly. Saying in verse 5, For neither at any time did we come with flattering words, as you know, nor with pretext for greed. God is our witness. So Paul tells them, That he didn't come to them to be praised by them. And he was not seeking the glory from men. He only wants to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. And Paul wants to do this because he wants those people to be saved. He tells them that he has great love for them and he's willing to give his his life to them because they are dear to him. And when we think about this lesson and in this particular part of scripture... Um, that Paul writes to the church at uh, Thessalonica, we can see how we can apply this to our lives as well. You know, I think the easiest thing in the world is to just simply give up on something. And you might be thinking, well, no, Eric, the easiest thing in the world is to not try in the first place. But in my experience, it takes a lot more effort To force yourself to not do something, to hem and haw over, oh, I just don't want to do this. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, it'll fail. Why would I do this? That takes a lot more effort than going, trying something half-heartedly, and then giving up when the results are not what you want them to be. But I want you to think about what the world would be like right now if Paul had given up at the first sign of failure. Or the first sign of difficulty. How many people would have never heard the gospel if he'd have just given up? And now I want you to think about our lives today. Because we know that there are so many ways that we can share the love of Jesus Christ with others. We can do this by simply taking the time to talk to other people. To let them know that we care. We can do this by being involved in our different mission opportunities. And we can do this by donating to causes that we find worthy and that are out there helping people. 
However, the one thing that we need to know, and I think that you probably do know this, is that no matter what we do, no matter how heartfelt our plea is to others, no matter how great we are when we are serving others, there's going to be times when we fail to achieve our goals. And so when we try and when we fail, our natural human reaction is to become frustrated. And, the more, and more times than not, our reaction is to give up. See, we don't want to have to deal with those feelings of failure. You know, this world is full of musical instruments that someone picked up a few times, realized it was going to be hard to become good at it, and then put it down forever. I personally thought at one point I was going to be the next Jimi Hendrix, and I can tell you that I probably haven't touched a guitar in yeah, five years easily, because it was hard. But when we try something and when we fail, what we do a lot of times is we allow ourselves that easy psychological out. We simply say, well, I tried, there's nothing else I could do. Now, sometimes that is true. Sometimes we go into something and we give it our all, our heart, our soul, we put it into it, and we still fail. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, if we attempt to look at things from the outside, we can more than likely find at least one thing that we could have done better. And now, as I said before, I think trying something once and giving it up is the easiest thing in the world to do. So what's the hardest thing in the world? Well, the hardest thing to do is to try again after you failed. Now, this may come as a huge shock to all of you, and I'm going to give you a big confession right now. But I am overweight. I know I couldn't believe it, too. I looked in the mirror this morning, and suddenly I realized, wow, I'm a little chubby. Now, my entire life, probably from about the age of when I was in the third grade on, it's been a struggle for me with my weight. Other than maybe a few wonderful years in my late teens where I was playing four sports at a time and I couldn't have possibly put on any weight if I tried. Other than that, it's been difficult. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've tried to lose weight and I can't tell you the countless diets or exercise programs I've been on. And at times I do see some good results, but I tend to give up when those results don't come fast enough. I become frustrated. Now, I'm not telling you this because I want you to feel bad for me. And I'm not telling you this because I want you to come up to me after services and say, oh, Eric, you're not that big. Don't worry about it. Or, hey, Eric, I have this new diet that I think you should try. I don't need that. And I'm not telling you this because this is the Eric Light Therapy Hour and I need to get this off my chest. That's not what I'm doing. I'm telling you to make this point. See, I'm not giving up on that. I'm not giving up on losing weight because I want to be a healthier person. And I want to be around to see my grandchildren grow. And I want to live a long and happy life with my wife, God willing. You see, I have something else that I can point to that's going to make me try and try again, no matter how many times I fail. And that, brothers and sisters, is what we need to be doing when we think about taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Just like Paul, who had trouble in Philippi, we have a decision to make whenever we are met with failure. Do we quit or do we go on? And I want you to think about this as well. I want you to remember that Jesus himself had trouble when he tried to pe preach to the people of Nazareth. And he had to leave that city in order for his ministry to truly begin. So if the Son of God faced failure and the, arguably, not arguably, the greatest missionary that has ever lived faced failure, how can we possibly expect our efforts to work perfectly each time we try? We have to go into any endeavor, whether it is something like a new food program or a new program for the youth or trying to put together a mission trip or just simply approaching a longtime friend and sharing our faith with them. We need to know that the first time we try something, we might not be successful. You see, I have a friend that I've known for over 20 years, which for me is more than half of my lifetime. And I've spent so many hours with this guy doing different activities, um, fishing, hunting, 
shooting pool, watching TV, whatever it is. Lots and lots of time with him. Uh, and I have now lost track of the amount of times that I have witnessed to him. And I no longer know how many times I've asked him to come to church with me. And he has never once taken me up on the offer. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he tells me every time, you know, hey, I'm not really interested, or more than likely what he does, and maybe you experience this too, he says something like, wow, sure, that sounds good. But then nothing ever actually comes of it. But that doesn't matter because I love him and I will continue to work on bringing him clo into a closer relationship with Jesus. And I'm sure all of you have at least one person you can point to in your life that you feel the same way about. But just like Paul, we have to continue working towards helping those people. Also, just like Paul, we need to be doing so for the glory of God and not for our own personal glory. You see, Paul was not going to the Thessalonians to get rich. He wasn't taking the gospel to them so he can get ahead in this life. And he, wasn't taking, he, was take, he was taking it to them out of his love for the people. And we have to adopt a similar approach to our taking the gospel to others as well. I know that right now, in this world, that seems so divided, a world that seems so angry, it might feel impossible to have love for your fellow man. And I know that at the best of times, it can be difficult. But right now, when it seems that the smallest thing can set people off, it feels like it's a monumental task to love others. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. God wants us to love them anyways. And he wants us to love them and show them the love that he has shown us. You know, there's a psychological theory about perfectionists. They're so scared to try anything new that might fail. It absolutely paralyzes them. They get so stuck in a state of fear that they refuse to even try because of the slight possibility that things will just not go right for them. Well, everyone, I'm here to tell you that in this instance, trying to reach people for Christ, we have to overcome that fear. Nothing will ever go perfectly for us. Because we are imperfect people taking the perfect gospel to other imperfect people. And there's a lot of imperfection there. But instead of worrying about that, I encourage you to embrace your own imperfections. Now, do not misunderstand me. I am not telling you to go out and sin and be happy about that and embrace that as your imperfection. No, what I am saying is this. Be willing to show others that you are not a perfect person. Be willing to show them that your life is not always so neat and put together. Show them you're not perfect. Show them that you are just saved through the amazing love of Jesus Christ. And I promise you that that will go so much further with people than trying to show them your perfect life. So brothers and sisters, we need to be willing to fail and we need to be willing to know that we're going to fail. And we need to know that sometimes the road ahead will be hard. You know, there's a saying on television and in movies you hear sometimes, failure is not an option. Well, the truth is I don't think you've truly failed at something until you give up altogether. If anything, when we try and when we fail, we can continue to learn. It is said that a wise person does not make mistakes because a wise person learns something from every mistake that they made. And I think this is true of us as well in our trying and failing to bring the gospel to others as well. When we try and when we fail, as long as we learn from that mistake and continue to push on, then we have not truly failed. The same is true if you're listening today and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior. You see... He is the greatest eraser of failure of all time. And he can take away all the stains of sin that have been a part of your life. And he wants you to come to him. And he wants you to be a part of his family. And if you'd like, I'd love to talk to you more about it. However, let us remember that no matter the adversity that we face, we need to remember that we have the love of Christ in our hearts. To the point... And it is there to point us forward at all times. Just like it was for Paul all those years ago. 
So my challenges for you this week are how can you share the gospel with others in a way that is only something you can do? And how can you share the gospel with others in a way that is part of what this church can do? I'd like you to consider that this week. Amen.